Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? I am Scott. That is Bo down there. There's a bunch of people in the peanut gallery. Today is the 18th day of July 2022. I had to think about it for a second. It's about 7.30 in the morning. Uh, and it's a beautiful day down here in Tampa, Florida. I'd like for that thing to go away. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> you heard Bo flopping his ears down there. Uh, let's see. What are we talking about? Some updates. Aunt BB. Aunt BB hopped on uh, a big plane yesterday to fly off uh, down south to go visit some folks and to go see a and experience a new country. I'm very excited for her. I'm very happy for her. She got there safely. She zapped me a DM uh, and I'm very happy for her. She will be posting vids, vidjas at, on her website, on her YouTube channel, very shortly, I am sure. Um, good for her. Good for her. Uh, another update. She uh, happened to be here, come by yesterday. Oh, there's Bo's head. She happened to come by yesterday um, and have some brunch before she was taking off. And there's Cricket uh, for her um, flight. <laughs> and she got to uh, she got to witness uh, something going away. Unfortunately, I was I wanted to do it when on Monday uh, after she was gone today after she was gone. However, somebody stopped by um, and made an offer on both of those. So there'll be no more Eclipseus videos. Eclipseus is gone, and so is Mom's Festiva. Um, clean slate, new chapter, all those cliches. Uh, I had to. I couldn't. The, the, the Festiva, the ignition issue, I was still working through that. <laughs> Short someplace, or it was ignition coil. And then, even if I got it running, it was pouring fucking oil out the back of it. So it was probably a blown head gasket. And I'm not putting. $1,800 or a new used motor after the old used motor I put in my mom was still around uh, for that uh, I hated to see it go but it's gone they're both gone uh, Eclipse is that problem I was never able to fix um, even after tearing down the side of the fucking motor and f finding top dead center for the number one fucking piston um that problem still wasn't resolved and i've still never heard back from these fucking people either the manufacturer that i bought it from or the the part that i bought it from or the uh, shipping company so that's gone they're both done gone over with toast um i'm remarkably okay with it i feel but i feel i feel bad it's a mixed bag obviously um but to be honest it was uh, i just realized uh, about two months prior to when i made a bit of a transition in, my, in myself two months ago uh and i made the transition primarily because i had to fix the car and focus on other things and so that's what I did and uh, it's been four months five months since I've had a vehicle to start with um, and yet I've been paying insurance on these things steadily uh, for a long time when one was fixed there for a while a year ago two years ago a year and a half ago I had the choice of either car and it was always good to have a backup and I kept saying, people said, man, you got a backup. That's awesome. I was like, yeah, but the problem becomes when they're both fucked. And you can't afford to fix either of them. Or you do pay money to fix one of them, uh, and they screw you over. So um, that's exactly what happened. Anyway, I'm done with them. It's finished. No more Eclipseus videos. They are done. They are history. They're relegated to the back pages of history. And we will see what happens next. We'll see what happens next. Uh, I was spending more money. I spent more money in the last year on those two cars. And here we are. Uh, than I would have spent on a car payment. 
Uh, I don't think I would have, I don't think, I mean, you could have, I guess, a piece of shit car, bought a car for that kind of money, but um, a better piece of shit than those were. Um, but um, right now, this is what I got left. <clears throat> and I just got this one. This one was brand fucking new. And the memories. So there you go. Let's move on to something more important um, in everyone's lives. The report from the uh, Texas Congress, the Republican uh, report came out uh, on what happened in Uvalde. And as expected, it's just a cover-up. It's a nice, slick, expensive, a lot of fucking $3,000 suits sitting around covering up what happened in Uvalde. Uh, because we govern by crisis. That's what we've become. A country, a nation. Uh, that's what happens when a nation becomes a failed state. It resorts to governing by crisis. Uh, anything that they want to push forward for whatever agenda they have, whether it's a new world order, whether it's World Economic Forum, whether it's gun grabbing in order to make room for, make ready for the new world order for the World Economic Forum, whatever the case may be. And I know, again, I hate to give Alex Jones credit, but this time he did something, he said something, it's, it's true. You know, he's saying these people are really going to fuck us. And they are going to cause a lot of people a lot of harm. Well, they're already doing it. He talked about the same thing I said the other day, and I've been saying for a while. And I, in fact, I wrote 15 years ago, and that in the end, they're going to do to us what we do to other nations. They're going to make the economy scream. They're going to break down the social institutions. They're going to destroy the social safety net so they can bring about a change, a drastic change in how they operate. <laughs> both foreign policy-wise and domestic policy-wise. And the domestic policy-wise is what's really critical for the people of those targeted nations. We've done this over and over and over again. And I said 17 fucking years ago when I first started off my website uh, on American Everyman, I said they will end up having to do it here to us because they'll come to a point where they can't satiate the big business interests, our national interests, the big banking interests, the venture capitalists, the vulture capitalists, they can't satiate them because they've become so accustomed to all these fucking profits and all this growth based on, uh, on our fucking foreign policy dictated at the end of a barrel of a gun. So there will become a time, I said years ago, that they have to turn that gun inward and they have to go after us. The last fucking, the last corpse to pick clean these vultures. And as Alex Jones mentioned the other day, that's exactly what they're doing. Of course, he spent the first couple of years of this thing Screeching about China, 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 China. So, <laughs> thank you, Captain Hindsight. Maybe. Um, let's talk about Evalde specifically. And let's get away from images of Scotty. Because we don't need images of Scotty. I am recording, am I not? Yes, we are. Beautiful. This is the preliminary investigative report released by Texas House Committee, House Committee, uh, on the shooting at the elementary school in Nevada found that no one was able to stop the massacre because of systematic failures and egregious poor decision making by the people in positions of power. The shooting resulted in the killing of 19 children and two teachers on May 24th. Systemic failures. Systemic failures like what? Systemic failures like, oh, I don't know, let's see. Oh, that's right. The Iraq weapons of mass destruction story. 
Oh, it was all a systemic failure. Everybody got, all the intelligence agencies got it wrong. It was a systemic failure. What happened on 9-11? Oh, it was a systemic failure. All our intelligence agencies, they couldn't communicate with one another. We have to fix it. It was a systemic failure. Over and over and over. What happened on fucking, with the, with the uh, subprime mortgage crisis? Oh, it was a systemic failure. <clears throat> time and time and time again. In the end, when they're done with their bullshit fucking... In the end, when they're done with their bullshit fucking... What is it? Please stop doing that. When they're done with their bullshit fucking investigations, they always come down on systemic failure. It's a systemic failure. And that is a systemic lie. They cannot ultimately explain why what happened happened. The only other possibility is it was done on purpose. Ergo, you have to come down to, oh, it was a systemic failure. There's no possible way to describe what happened as a systemic failure. Listen to what this man's going to say to you. He's giving you a bit of insight into what they've discovered. Listen to what he says. There were many officers at that scene who were either denied access to the building, were told misinformation, some were even told false information. Some were told that the police chief of the Consolidated Independent School District was actually inside the room, actively negotiating with a suitor. What he just described to you was, uh, as best as I could describe it, a stand-down order. Many of them were ordered. When the uh, Bortec team got there, they got there at 12.05. They were suited up by 12.10 because that's what they do. They get suited up on the fucking trip there and they're ready to go. And they didn't go in until 12.56, 12.55. They were not allowed in the fucking building. They were told to stand down. What he just told you was a stand down order. It's verification. And... According to them, in their research and their investigation, some were actually told who were on the scene, we can't go in right now because Aaron Donda is in there fucking negotiating with them. As they occasionally hear gunshots and children screaming. And they still don't go in. That is not a systemic failure. That is not misinformation they were being lied to in order to keep them out of that building and somebody on high made the decision to keep the stand to, get, to issue the stand down order to keep the Bortec team out of there to keep the officers who were there supposedly now they've got more information on the shooter the patsy not only was he a fucking uh poor kid who was at a different school and for some, somehow he got $6,000 worth of gear and then went to a, a totally different school to shoot those kids up. Not the ones he was supposedly mad at for calling him poor. But turns out he wasn't even in that fucking school, the other school. He had been some guy who was at the age of 17 had finally fucking graduated the ninth grade. They got themselves a mentally challenged imbecile once again for their fucking patsy that's just uh, that's as as, as 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 nice as i can put it and that's what they do over and over and over again now there's two ways to look at what happened They still haven't released images of who walked through that door. And they've got cameras on that fucking hallway. 
We know because they've shown shots of that hallway after the fact, when cops were standing around in that hallway looking, peeping down the fucking other hallway for 77 minutes. They still haven't released images of who came through that door, of the shooter coming through that door. And my guess is because it isn't that fucking mentally challenged, intellectually challenged, young fucking kid. It's not. Which raises all sorts of questions. One of which is, um, what were they actually doing for 77 minutes? Why did they keep them away from that bank of windows where they could have easily sniped him, whoever was in there, and killed him? In one shot, been done, finished. Why didn't they do that? Why did they keep people away from those windows? What was happening for 77 minutes? <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is, whatever they were doing, they were waiting for people to die. To get the body count up because they govern by crisis now and that's the only way they can govern by crisis that's the only way they can run around and grab your fucking guns and convince a sector of the populace uh, that that's what needs to happen because of Evalde because of Parkland because of Sandy Hook you understand my point we're the only country that does that because we're the only country that still uh, has a second amendment And it's not because citizens have guns. It's because certain people don't want citizens to have guns. Let's take a look more at what happened with their investigation, quote-unquote. Systemic failures. People were lied to. Cops were lied to. Cops were lied to. To keep them out of there. Cops were not allowed. The Bortec team was not allowed in the building. <laughs> that, by definition, is a stand-down order. Why? Why do they do it? We just talked about that. They're going to, uh, as, as I said before in a previous video, uh, Pedro Arandande is now the scapegoat. It's now official. Uh, he has now been dismissed from the uh, Avalde School District Police Department uh, where he oversaw five whole people. While this was going on, by the way, this hearing, this, this announcement, they kept the, the, the fathers out of the fucking building. They kept fathers out of the building. They didn't let them in there to hear what was going on, to hear their fucking results of their quote-unquote investigation. Why? I guess because they didn't want the fathers to jump up and get pissed off. Because it was clearly bullshit. Here is a woman. They left the mothers in. And here's what they did. As the press just fucking, I don't give a shit. I'm leaving. I'm fucking mainstream media. I get paid fucking $180,000 a year for this dumb shit. I'm leaving. And as they fucking leave. As they leave. Because there's no accountability. There's no nothing. Oh, look at this. McConaughey brings dead girl's shoes to White House. I told you about that piece of shit. And here you go. Where's Matthew McConaughey? Matthew McConaughey went through this whole fucking scene, this whole monologue... How about that? He went through this whole fucking scene, whole fucking monologue about how much he gives a shit about the people of, of, of Uvalde since he's from Uvalde. But now he's nearly a billionaire. Where is he in this? Nowhere to be seen. CNN has five key takeaways on the shooting. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, 
They, law enforcement shares systemic responsibility for their systemic failures. There's a lack of effective incident command. As everyone stands around in their shorts with their fucking vest on and their nice little pop guns and no one does anything. This is a piece of body cam footage. I'll talk about that in a second. Here's yet another camera showing nobody doing nothing. And this honestly looks like they're holding people back. That might have been after they've already gone through. To break down the communication, it's a new video captures confusion and chaos. And of course, new details on the shooter's background. He was basically a moron. He wasn't in school. He had graduated in ninth grade at the age of 17, so he was a moron. Perfect, perfect patsy for the FBI. I want to talk about this really quickly. I'm going to show you a good part of this. This is CNN, and this is their coverage, and it is uh, under fair use authorization because we're talking about the news, and we are evaluating the news, so ergo, CNN can't fucking claim copyright infringement. This is uh, basically what happened, and the news story is, part of this that came out yesterday was, um, they showed one fucking officer's edited, severely edited, body cam footage. He wasn't one of the first ones to arrive on the scene. It doesn't appear to be too bright. He ends up leaving and going and hanging out outside, milling about. And once during the video, you can actually hear they allowed, through their editing process, you to hear one statement from the radio. I told you before, that's why they won't release the unedited versions of their fucking uh, body cam footage. Because you will hear them being told to stand down. You can hear one section in there where they're talking about the, the 911 person that has told their dispatcher that there's a kid alive in there, at least one, while victims are lying on the ground bleeding to death. And they still do nothing because they're still on stand down order. Someone's still keeping them from inside, going inside that room. And by the way, Aaron Dondo did check a door, but it was a door to a different fucking, it was on the other side of the fucking hallway and down the hall from where they knew the shooter was. It looked like he was trying to get into a fucking janitorial closet. I can't imagine why any other room would be fucking would be locked. He's According to him, he was praying, please let this be the one, to get into the janitorial closet. To do what? Hide? Let's have a listen to this. This is from CNN. Again, this is fair use. This is for evaluation and news purposes. Shots fired! Get inside! Go, go, go! Wow, New body bad. cam video released by the Uvalde mayor shows the frantic first moments police arrived on scene at Robb Elementary. This video taken by Uvalde Police Sergeant Daniel Coronado as he made his way inside He's the building. Running, but within moments, more walking. gunshots. Shots fired inside the building, Uvalde! Get inside! Go, go, go! And the guy in front New body of cam video released by the Uvalde mayor the shows the running, frantic first moments police arrived on scene fast. at Robb Elementary. This video taken by Uvalde Police Sergeant <laughs> Daniel Coronado as he made his way inside the building. But within moments, more gunshots. Shots fired inside the building, you body. Everyone knows that, dude. They're already Which there. building? Oh, look at that. Throw a wide open. No little lies they told you about that? Throw a wide open. I don't know. Wonder why that was. Look at this now. I can't break. Somebody can break. Careful. They're not even close to the edge of the fucking hallway. Thanks, John. Fire. 
After taking cover outside, Sergeant Coronado gives his God first damn. update on the situation to responding officers. Okay, guys, he's on inside this building. We have him de contained. Okay, let me just say off the bat, yes, obviously the problem is that they were given a stand down order. However, um, I will say this. <laughs> And they've had all kinds of people online in these alt community fucking videos uh, who have been in situations like that. Former officers, uh, former SEALs and so forth. Uh, people who are uh, uh, hostage rescue team folks. People who have been trained for those situations. Clearly, the fat dude who's running, who's... who's the camera's attached to, and I say he's fat because you can tell from how he ran, he waddled fast, and how fucking out of shape he is. So he's clearly fat. Um, and of course the fat dude standing in front of him, which could be Aaron Dondo, I believe it's Aaron Dondo, uh, and how he was backing down the hallway after the shots were fired. You can give anybody a gun and a badge. You can give anybody a gun and a badge. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean they're ready for a situation like that. You can give anybody a gun and a badge, and they can go rah, rah, rah through a fucking shoot house. They can go rah, rah, rah when they hop out the back of the fucking you know, van for training. They can go rah, rah, rah when they're fucking rappelling down the fucking wall in a fucking movie with uh, for, 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 uh, uh, with, with uh, John Belushi and fucking Dan Aykroyd. You can give them all of that. And when it comes down to shots being fired, we don't know who they are. I don't give a fuck how many times they've shot a cardboard fucking target. You don't know who they are. You have no idea. They sit around talking about how tough they're going to be. You have no idea. I think those were the fucking school officers be my guess i don't think that was swat i don't think that was uh, uh hostage rescue and it certainly wasn't bortec so we can in hindsight look back at what those guys did but like i said before they're just mall cops they're glorified mall cops not even glorified mall cops because in a mall you might have a fucking robbery and you're dealing with adults <laughs> uh, they clearly were not in a position to, with their experience levels, uh, deal with a situation like that. Later, those guys showed up, but those guys were kept out of the fucking building. There's more to see this in this video. Uh, I'll play a little more for you, just so you get a, more of a flavor of it. He's gonna be on the building on the west side of the property. Careful with the windows facing east, right there. Minutes later, Coronado tells dispatch what he believes is happening, that the gunman is in one of the school's offices, not a classroom. Male subjects in the school on the west side of the building. Uh, he's contained, we got That's multiple officers door. inside the building at this time. He believe he's, uh, Barricaded in one of the one of the offices, messed up is still shooting. But as the minutes continue to tick by, the urgency first seen by the initial response fades away. Instead, Uvalde police officers are seen hunkering down, waiting for more backup. That guy's Critical moments his wife. pass by at a time children were still alive in the classroom. Evolved. I think that's at one point not. you can hear Sergeant Coronado asking for permission to open a door into the hallway where armed officers are already inside. 
officers inside the building. Am I clear to open the door here on the south side of the building? It's after this moment that we learn that Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District Police Chief Pete Arredondo is inside the building as other officers crowd around looking for guidance. Arredondo has been a central figure in the state's investigation of the shooting. DPS Director Steve McCraw calling his actions on the day of the massacre a, quote, abject failure. As more officers arrive and more in action, you can hear police begin to seek direction. What are we doing here? We also have video from Officer Justin Mendoza, who also arrived. Now he's, as you can see from that video, this individual dressed a little differently. It's clearly tactical. Action, you can hear police be- He's tactical. He's wants, he wants to know what the fuck they're doing. Because he knows damn well, standing around like this and waiting for kids to bleed to death is just, is wrong. Plus, it's not what he's been trained to do. Now, I don't know who he is. Could be his first day in the goddamn job. He could have been a librarian for most of his life. But he's definitely trained, he's, he's dressed differently, he's, he looks like he's tactical. Which means he's probably somebody who's at least seen some kind of armed conflict. Begin to seek direction. What are we doing here? And he's forced we to also have outside. video from Officer Justin Mendoza, who also arrived on the scene. At 11.58 local time, police helped the first students and teachers from a nearby classroom escape the building. At the same time, Sergeant Coronado can be seen helping children escape from a window outside. At this point, it had been nearly 25 minutes since police first entered the building. More than 12 minutes later, we get our first glimpse of Chief Arredondo in the hallway of Robb Elementary. You can hear him pleading with the gunman to give up, but seemingly unaware that children may still be inside the classroom. Until... Let me know if there's any kids in there or anything. This could be peaceful. Could you tell me your name? Anything I can know, please? Moments later, a critical piece of the puzzle from the camera of Officer Mendoza. 911 dispatch gives a chilling account from a student still in the classroom. You have a child on the line. Hey, what was that? And yet, even with that information... They still sat around and did nothing. As I just told you, as I said, it was confirmed. If they released that fucking footage, all of the body cam footage unedited, you would hear who gave the stand-down order, who kept them from going in there. Um, and that's the only way you know exactly why. When you hear that, you know it's not Pete Arandondo, that dumbass who's standing there, who's in charge of five fucking mall cops... One of which appears to be so fucking fat he can't even run half the distance of the length of the fucking school without having a goddamn conniption. Uh, and as soon as he hears a gunshot, his instinct is to walk backwards, not forward. Um, he's not the guy who's fucking responsible for this, but somebody is. Let me show you something else, too. Just so you know, this is, this is a long time coming. This is a long time coming. The Russian foreign minister is laying out in this article, and it's posted by the Saker. It used to be Vineyard of the Saker. Now it's the Saker. Sergei Lavrov wrote an article. He talked about stage incidents as the Western approach to doing business, which means ruled by crisis, governed by crisis. I want to read this a bit for you so you understand what we're talking about, what I'm talking about. Quote, Today the Russian armed forces, together with self-defense units of Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, are delivering on the objectives of the special military operation with great resolve to put an end to the outrageous discrimination and genocide of the Russian people and eliminate direct threats to the security of the Russian Federation that the United States and its satellites have been creating on Ukraine territory, Ukrainian territory for years. While losing on the battlefield, the Ukrainian regime and its Western patrons have descended 
to staging bloody incidents to demonize our country in the eyes of the communi international community. We've already seen in Buka, Mariupol, Kamarsk, and Kremlchuk, Kremlchug. Uh, the Defense Ministry has been regularly issuing warnings with facts in hands about upcoming staged incidents and fakes. There is a distinctive pattern that portrays betrays the provo provocation staged by the West and its henchmen. In fact, they started long before the Ukrainian events. They're going to list a bunch of them. I'm going to read one. This goes back to the invasion of Yugoslavia, the illegal invasion of Yugoslavia to regime change the country because they were going too far to the left. He doesn't go back as far as Gladio. And they don't mention the fucking fake chemical weapons attacks they staged. And one was real, created by our fucking terrorists and, and regime change terrorists in Syria. And one was staged. Where they killed a bunch of people and then staged their bodies lying around. Both involved di people actually dying, civilians actually dying. And both were staged to look like, to try to make it look like it was done by Assange. Not Assange. Uh, slip of the tongue. Assad. They don't mention those. But they do start off with this. Take 1999, the village of Rakak in Serbia's autonomous province of Kosovo and Matharja. A group of OSCE inspectors arrived at the site where several dozen corpses dressed in civilian clothes were discovered. Without any investigation, the mission head declared the incident an act of genocide, even though making a conclusion of this kind was not part of the mandate issued to this internal international official. NATO immediately launched a military aggression against Yugoslavia, during which it intentionally destroyed a television center, bridges, passenger trains, and other civilian targets. Later, it was proved with conclusive evidence that the dead bodies were not civilians, but militants of the Kosovo Liberation Army, an illegal armed group, our puppet fucking destabilization assets, dressed in civilian clothing. But by that time, the staged incident had already taken its toll, offering a pretext for the first illegal use of force against an OS, OSCE member state since the signing of the Helsinki Final Act in 1975. It is telling that the statement that triggered the bombings came from William Walker, a U.S. citizen who headed the OSCE's Kosovo verification mission. Oh, wow. How convenient that is. Separating Kosovo from Serbia by force and setting up Camp Bonsteel, the largest U.S. military base in the Balkans, were the main outcomes of the aggression. And then it goes on to talk about 2003, Secretary of State lying to the U.N. Security Council. He had to have the head of the CIA sit behind him because he didn't want to be in the video making up all those lies by himself. They talk about what happened in 2011 in Libya. The, oh my God, they're giving fucking Viagra to their soldiers and telling them to rape everyone bullshit. The, oh my God, they're bombing their own civilians bullshit. In 2014, of course, they talk about Ukraine. And, of course, the sniper attacks from Georgian snipers that we brought in to kill both police officers and protesters alike. It's a good article. You should go over there to read this. I will post the link down below. The point is, what they're getting to is this. <laughs> they cannot justify what they do without staging horrific scenes of violence. We have the right to protect. That was their fucking decision. That was their thing. Back in the day, it was a uh, unitary executive can make the decision to go to war on his own because of the weapons of mass destruction lies. And then eventually, once they all petered out, it was just freedom and democracy for the people of Iraq. Um, then, of course, there's the right to protect slogan that came out of the 2011 invasion of Libya. And, of course, that was carried on through uh, Syria as well. 
<laughs> they cannot fucking get what they want because the people of this country will react much like that mother, Data Navalder. What the fuck are you doing? Where the fuck are you going? This, this solves nothing. We don't, we don't want any part of this. We don't want any part of this. We didn't want fucking to get into World War II until they allowed Japan to fucking bomb Pearl Harbor. We didn't want to go into fucking Afghanistan for the trans-Afghan pipeline until someone pulled off 9-11. I'm sorry, that was systemic failures. My, my bad. System and, and Iraq was systemic failures. My bad. And of course, Evalde was systemic failures. My bad. You rule by, you govern by fucking crisis. You rule by fucking crisis. When you are the head of a failed state. A failed state that looks like it's about to fucking collapse altogether under its own, the weight of its own fucking greed and corruption. I hate to bring this up because dude is a, obviously got serious fucking problems, but Hunter Biden, how fucked up does the country have to be when the same fucking dude who, as a senator, pushed a fucking bill that said, if you got one little $5 rack of crack, you got to spend five years in prison. This is terrible. And now this video of the dude smoking crack, hooking up with hookers, sitting around smoking crack in his fucking rehab facility, and weighing out 20.4 grams of fucking crack on his fucking digital scale and arguing with some hooker. Uh, about what happened to the rest of it. <laughs> and he's the, the son of the president. And so far, he's not under arrest. The, the corruption in this country is just at a... It's, it's at a biblical level. It really is. It's at Sodom and Gomorrah level. I mean, I, there's no other way to fucking put it for me. I, there's, I, there's no other nation ever on earth. Maybe fucking... Papa Doc and Baby Doc Duvalier. Maybe fucking um, Mubarak. Maybe Mubarak. I don't know of another country, another nation, uh, that's been so, historically, that's been so abjectly corrupt. Uh, and maybe my history is, is not that. My understanding of history is not that deep. So I'm sure that there's probably others. But... It's just, and it's not Republican or Democrat. It's the whole fucking thing. It's the two-party fake party system where there's only one party involved. And that party represents the interests that are doing this shit to us. And that includes what happened in Evalde. Whoever released that fucking body cam footage, carefully selected, so it's not really there, but it looks like body cam footage. It's technically body cam footage, but the guy was kicked out and told to go down the hall so he couldn't really see, and they carefully edited what you heard coming over his fucking radio. Those guys don't just stand around because they're standing around. Those guys stand around because they're told to stand around. Vortec didn't fucking enter at 12, 12 10 when they got there and they jumped out of the thing rah 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 and suited up those guys have seen some fucking action those guys don't walk backwards when they get all shit their pants when they hear gunshots like the fucking mall cops do they don't of course I haven't met, I haven't met them I'm not a professional tactician military tactician but I'm guessing those guys and from their background and the, and the places they've been no That's why they were kept out of the building. People have a right to be angry about this, but let me tell you something. Getting all the way back, we're gonna, we're gonna wind all the way back, circle all the way back to Alex Jones. Get used to this shit. You can get used to this shit. Because like we said back in the early days, now I only got involved in 2005, but back in the early days of the fucking truth movement. If you don't fix this now, imagine what they're going to think they can get away with in the future. 
Imagine what they'll do in the future because they know there's going to be no fucking oversight and there's going to be no accountability. That's what that woman was yelling about. Where's the fucking accountability? Where's the fucking accountability? Where is it? Accountability! Come on! Where's the accountability? Right. Back in the day, before it was fucking hip to be a goddamn conspiracy theorist, and a lot of folks were shitting on us, maybe some of you guys out there watching right now, what did we tell you? If there's no accountability for this, that's going to set the fucking, that's going to set the mark. That's, that's, that's where they're, they're going to be able to get away with anything. And they're going to know they're going to be able to get away with anything. And then you got all the American Gladio events that took place. And now, of course, this latest one in Ovalde. <laughs> and there is no accountability because there can't be accountability. Because it comes from on high. And when you start fucking pulling those people out, start trying to hold those people accountable, start putting those people in front of fucking judges and juries, they're going to start talking. And when they start talking, other people will fall, and then other people will fall, and then other people will fall, and they'll start talking. And it'll work its way all the way to the top where people like her and people like you Sit back and say, holy shit, the whole goddamn system is absolutely rotten to the fucking core. It's absolutely rotten to the fucking core. 77 minutes. And everything that I told you about this thing... In spite of the best editing they did with CNN, in spite of the fact that they chose that dumbass as fucking uh, uh, body cam footage, and nobody else's, in spite of the fact that we don't see who's walking through that fucking door, in spite of all that, everything I've said so far has been confirmed. They lied to him. They told him not to go in. It was a stand-down order from the beginning. They wanted people, children, to die. And that's because they ruled by crisis. And they needed a big crisis to push their agenda. And as Lavrov said, that is the same for our fucking foreign policy. It is the same for our domestic policy. It is all they have left. They are the terrorists. They're the terrorists overseas, dictating our foreign policy and dictating what we get our fucking terrorist proxy armies to do. And apparently they are the terrorists dictating what happens here inside the United States of America. My heart goes out to the people, the families and the friends and the loved ones uh, of those lost in Evaldo. It is a horrific situation. Not just how they lost their loved ones, but how they're being treated now. How the press is packing up. When the real story is, the family's saying, what are you doing? You've told us nothing. And you're not saying anything about doing anything. And the fucking press just turns it back to him, packs up the cameras. Okay, let's go get some coffee. I'm going to get a subway on the way. Okay. Don't give a shit. Anyway, there's your update. <laughs> I will see you later. Have a very good Monday. Bye-bye.